Hey everyone, it's Joe Carroll. Excited to be with you guys today. One of the most common requests that we've been getting lately is for content based around vocals. Uh, and I understand why. That's the most important thing in many of our mixes. But what I've been seeing a lot is handling vocal effects, you know, creating dimension, creating depth with delays and reverbs, what patches we like best, what patches work best for this song or the other song. And those are great questions. So let's just dive into something like that right now. So we're going to do a video today on my interpretation of creating depth and dimension using reverbs and delays. I don't know if it's unique, but I have a method, you know, and a mindset. And that is kind of the fact that Warren uses the word ball of energy when he talks about his lead vocal. And, and that's exactly the way I think of it, too. I never use those words till I, I heard him say it. So right in the middle, we have this lead vocal. And it's bright, it's present, it's compressed, it's, you know, whatever it needs to be, that's exactly what it is. And we build from there using delays and reverbs to create our depth and dimension. And now uh, there's a lot of things that go into that. How wide is our reverbs? How long is our reverbs? How bright or how dark is our reverbs? Same goes with delays. How stark is the delay? How ambient is the delay? How wide is it? There, there's a lot of things that go into making me, when I listen to a song, connect with the lead vocal in a way that connects to the message that they're selling. And, you know, what story are they telling? How is it connecting to the track? And it is what I'm doing, is it making that better? Is it help selling, you know, help sell the message? And so let's talk about that a little bit. I have a song here called Stepping Stones. This is a great friend of mine, uh, Chase Goring. Chase uh, was a, one of the very top finalists on America's Got Talent a few years ago and has got an enormous fan base. So hopefully some of you guys already follow him. It's pop, but it's kind of acoustic -y pop. It's uh, programmed drums, got some synth elements, but uh, it's heavily driven with ukulele, acoustic guitar. It's kind of the way I left it on the final mix that we, we did a couple years ago, but I've wiped all vocal delays and reverbs. It's, I'm just starting over with, uh, with bringing, importing my template. So let me kind of give you a feel for the song. Remember, the vocal is bone dry. Here we go. Well, I can't see tomorrow You hear like, well, I don't know that I would do a lot right there. We want him to sound like he's a star. We want him to sound like he's in a space, not quite that stark and, and, and just like, ah. Nonetheless, we don't want the traditional tale. We have to, you know, come up with a plan, right, to, to make him sound like a star, but not be overwhelmed with reverb and, and, and audible lengthy tales. And, but there's other moments. The reason I chose this song is because it's kind of got some scene changes and some things going on. So in each of the pre-choruses or the back half of each verse, rather, there's these moments where he's doing oohs or ahs that need to sound further away from us. So that should sound definitely like it's more towards the back of the stage, right? We're going to wash that out more with an audible tail. Last but not least, in the choruses, or the hook, we'll call it, the lead vocal, the melody, and one harmony part get very wide. So it's very, very uh, stacked up and layered, and it's a whole different scene change. Here's that. That's going to take a whole different set of tools. So that said, how do we as engineers effectively just start our day, pull up a song and react quick while our brain is, you know, we have this thought, right? We're like, oh, this is this. Well, nine times out of 10, it's because it's already in our template. That's not selling the song short. The, the idea for me is to import a template that's all inclusive, meaning it's large, like lots of flavors. I don't have a reverb. I don't have two reverbs, I have tons of things ready to go that just fit what I'm hearing in my head because I want to be able to act on it fast and get to the next thing while all these things are still firing, right? So I've got this massive template that I import that's got lots of stuff. So I'm going to show you all my vocal stuff. I'll try to bring up each of the patches that I'm dealing with so you guys can screen capture it if you want to uh, use any of these settings in your own productions. But you'll see here I have four vocal reverbs, one, two, three, and moment. Moment, as you would expect, is the really big, long stuff that's not used throughout the song very often, just hitting a spot here and there, and not even every song. But I go in stages of brighter, shorter, 
all the way up to that. So you'll see rows here of my short things, which I'm going to have some springs here, like Big Sky. Here's one of my favorite, like go-to springs, for example. So I'm going to have that inserted, ready to go. Right, and there'll be a, a plethora of other things. I see the EMTU 250. I see the Bricasti, or well, the Seventh Heaven from Liquid Sonics. But my beginning place is right here with the Lexicon 480. I know it's been around since the 80s. It's still massively awesome. And the, that plate, A plate, is just one of my go tos. Not taking up a lot of space, but putting a star in a a star space. And then you'll see, I just, I moved down the line here. I see 480s, Seventh Heavens, uh, Tai Chi. I see Capital Chambers from Universal Audio. And then I get to my delays and I bring in four different delays. There's actually fifth. There's a, there's a hidden track that I only activate if I need it. But one of the keys you'll see is you think, wow, that's a lot of horsepower. But most of this stuff is set to a predetermined preset and made inactive. So it's using no DSP power on the computer. Now, most of us nowadays, you know, are running really high power M1 chips, M2 chips or something like that. But I, I understand there's, a, there's some of us that are on older machines. You can always cut this back. And instead of using more sends, uh, you know, just have two returns and just more inactive plugins on it with vo predetermined voices. To help. So it's, a, it's all possible even on, you know, older machines. Okay, that said, all of these are feeding into... Just like the good old days, when we brought everything up on an SSL to mix it, we loved if our reverbs went to a channel strip. And that way we could quickly, if it wasn't exactly what we heard, wanted to hear, right? Ooh, that's perfect, except I need a little bit more nasty 2K or something in it. Just turn some knobs real fast and get it done. And I love doing that. So I have SSL channel strips just ready to go, just, just set, setting there in park and idle. And then as I get my bigger reverbs and my bigger delays going, you'll see that I do have some widening tools. Because the way I see it, I want my first row of delay, right, for example. And same with the, the room. I want that to be the brightest. I want that to possibly be the narrowest. And then how I see doing this effectively, creating dimension not only in width, but also dimension in front to back, is that as things decay, they get wider and they get darker, right? Now, rules are meant to be broken. I break my own rules every, well, maybe not every day, but often. So that's just my starting spot, if that makes any sense. So I'm creating this like pyramid of depth and dimension. So I got the, the close, tight vocal. I've got short rooms and delays right behind that that's tucked in and brighter. And it, and it trails off into darkness and really, you know, darkness, meaning it sounds further away. And, and, and also volume has a lot to do with that. But also it's frequency response, okay? So anyway, all that to say, my largest, darkest tools generally have some kind of widener because I want them to even sound like they're coming out outside the edges of the speaker. The very first thing I do is something that I haven't even talked about yet, but I use it on... Gosh, I would say 70% of the songs I work on. And that's the old split harmonizer trick. It's been around forever. And you'll see this preset right here. What I want to do is I want to turn this up to the point where I hear it and then back it down just a little bit. And it's more apparent in headphones, but it's just a little bit of a, stereo, a faux stereo imaging thing. It just makes the vocal sound just that much more important. Well, I can't see tomorrow. It's that kind of effect. Now, the key to it is you'll see little detunings and little delays. The key is that the, the delay side that's the least delayed should have the, the detune on it. Whereas the one that's the longest delay should be tuned up. And that way they still sound like they, instead of sounding like they get to you like this, they still sound like they reach you at the, at the same point. That's really the only trick of the split harmonizer trick. Put the um, track on and let's get this set to the right level, okay? Will I be alone forever? I find a love and build a home. Perfect, just, just barely there. The next thing I would do is I would use delays. First delay that I'm going to use is going to be a slap delay. And let's just take a look at it right here. And I have a couple options on each thing, but my kind of go-to right now is the SSL X Echo, which is the tape-based tape, tape -based delay. And this is how I get my slaps. So I have 15 ips, I have 30, and I have 7.5. And depending on the song, one or more of those will sound one will sound better than the others, basically. But 15 is a good starting spot. Will I be alone forever? I find a love and build a home. 
Okay, so it's darker than the lead vocal, but it's not dark. And it's it's wider than the lead vocal, but it's not wide. So it's tucked in. It's, it's, it's not extreme whatsoever. So that's kind of the way I'm starting this pyramid of depth and dimension, okay? The thing is, I may or may not use the tape slap because sometimes... You know, they're, they're shorter a lot of times, but I also have a short delay that's going to start with a 16th note. Kind of the number one that I start with is the uh, digital setting on the McDSP EC300. And the reason I use digital is because I'm looking for a brighter, tighter sound. And one of the things about the EC300 is they have this width knob here. You'll see it's set to about 49. I don't know why. That's no magic number. But that way it's it, it's wider than the lead vocal, but not extreme whatsoever. And, and and again, this is my brightest option. So let's check it out. Will I be alone forever? I find a love and build a home. Okay, I think for this song, I'm going to go there. Usually if I use slap, I do not use my shorter 16th note delay. Uh, they Because the they're, they're going to be close enough together that a lot of times it, it's just too much that it's just too much. Um, so I'll use one or the other. So in this case, let's take the slap and let's just take it off, okay? And let's put this in the track. Ready? Here we go. Will I be alone forever? I find a love and build a home. That's about right, right there. Will I be alone forever? I find a love and build a home. Okay, perfect. I'm going to duck it down just a little because um, I thought it was just a little too much there. Okay, so the next tool I'm going to bring up is my longer delays. And now I won't, I'll typically automate this or break my vocal out into multiple tracks because I won't use this everywhere, right? Maybe my short guy is everywhere, except if there's some kind of a drop where the vocal is supposed to sound extremely close and, and dry. This longer guy, let me give you a feel for what it's doing, okay? Will I be alone forever? I find a love and build a home. Now you'll see it's darker, noticeably darker, and longer, so it sounds further away from us, but it's also very wide. And so again, what they have built in here is this, this, this width tool right here. And now another little trick that you're hearing, but I haven't told you about yet, that goes a long way to creating dimension for me, is I send my delay returns back to my reverbs. Okay, so the way you do that is you just use aux ends just like you would on your 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 uh, vocal direct track. And what I do by default is I feed a little of my short delay into my shortest room setting, which is vocal one. I send a little of my longer delay into vocal two, which is my little bit darker, longer uh, reverb. And But you'll see, you know, I may change my mind at any point. So I've got them here ready to go. But by default, I start with just a touch of it there. And let me kind of show you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it off and I'm going to use too much of it. So you can hear just how much effect in dimension that this trick has on our delay sounds. Check it out. Will I be alone forever? I find a love and build a home. Okay, that's really cool. So the answer is generally somewhere in between there. Uh, sometimes I, I don't use it at all because I want the delays to be really stark. And sometimes I use a lot of it. There's no right or wrong, but you can see one of the cool benefits of this is sometimes on certain pop tracks where you want the vocal to sound close, but you still want that wall of, of stuff going on in the background, that's one of the ways to make a vocal sound very close and up front, but at the same time still have all the whack, all the business going on in the background to, of the, the long, glorious tails. So you can use less reverb on the vocal but still get some of that reverb effect, right? By like taking the short delay and sending it to our longer re, uh, reverb return, right? Instead of the short ones, things like that. Get the vocal more out front, but still have all the business, okay? <laughs> so that's a fun little trick. I use really heavily, really heavily. So let's just start with it by my default positions here, about minus 15 or so. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we have kind of an idea, kind of a plan going for, uh, actually, I don't. Let me let me get the vocal uh, level on the long delay set. Will I be alone forever? I find a love and build a home. Now I'm gonna want a little more feedback going. Will I be alone forever? There we go. I find a love and build a home. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so now what I would probably do is I'm not going to use that until like the choruses, right? So I'm going to use automation because automations are one of our best good friends. And I'm going to turn that just 
like way down to where it's barely audible. And then once he hits this point, it'll tr- it, it'll pop up and be a little more noticeable to help with that scene change from the verse to kind of the hooky chorus thing, okay? Hey everyone, it's Joe Carroll. I'm in my mix room in Nashville, Tennessee. I would like to have you guys join me right here as we mix from top down, beginning to end, a song from a friend of mine, Kaylee Bishop. If you haven't heard of her, you should check her out. She was a finalist on The Voice, just an amazing singer. It's an amazing song, kind of nasty, kind of swampy, kind of bluesy. And you're gonna be able to download the multi-tracks of this song, follow along, and it is an in-the-box mix, so you can use your plugins. We have real drums that are fat and swampy, bass guitar that's kind of aggressive. We have acoustic guitar. We also have an acoustic resonator guitar. We have a couple passes of rhythm electric we have a just a nasty nasty slide electric guitar lead harmonica we have lead vocal couple background vocals we got to put it all together and try to make it sound like a hit let's start working on our reverb and I'm going to start with up here. You'll see on my shortest channel, um, I have my my uh, Relab 480, which is a Lexicon 480. That's kind of uh, you'll see. I, I mean, I have other options. I have Seventh Heaven, a Bracasti patch, uh, various things ready to go. But the A plate just works on so many songs. It, you know, it's just kind of I, I want it to just be there to at least hear it. So let me show it to you. Will I be- It's a great patch. Let me hear, let you hear it in solo. Will I be alone forever? Nice, sparse tail. Just really fits so many mixes very, very well. But what I want to do is I want him to sound closer to me than that. So what I'm going to do is I have this vocal ambience patch, and I'm going to have it going instead. So let's take a look at it here. Let's go a little under a second. Will I be alone forever? Perfect. Okay. And the other thing that I do sometimes is I use a patch and you'll see, you know, I I just, they're here, they're just inactive. Uh, So I'm going to bypass the the Lexicon 480 and I'm going to pull up the cinematic rooms. And what I do here is I have this patch that I call uh, early reflections because I have no reverb tail whatsoever. It's just the early reflections. And sometimes on the upbeat, poppy things, that's that's really perfect. Will I be alone forever? I find a love and build a home. All right, so let's put that into the track and just kind of hear it. Will I be alone forever? I find a love and build a home. Now with the short room as opposed. Will I be Okay, for this song, I think I'm going to go with the 480. Okay, so I, it, again, I'm going to hold it up here. But if you, if in the Relab plugin, if you buy it, I do have a set of presets in there, and this this vocal ambience is in there, so um, you can grab that. But now, what I'm going to do is, as we transition into the chorus, I, I want it to grow a little bit. So this this really tight, dry sound that we have going on right now is going to start coming up with a little more uh, a little more audible delay. Uh, I'm sorry, reverb. So I'm going to go to my next largest reverb, which is a row of things that, you know, from maybe two seconds, two to two and a half, somewhere in there. Everybody's got some blues. And every- okay, that's not the right guy. Let's try the Seventh he- Heaven uh, Bracasti from Liquid Sonics. And that is a plate right here that I have, the Sunset B. And I really like this one. Everybody's got some blues. Yeah, see, it really matches well with that shorter room patch. So you can combine this with the reflection patch that I showed you from from, um, their um, cinematic rooms with a 480 short ambience patch. And you get the tail from this, but you get kind of the early reflection, small room, you know, he's in a space sound from the other one. To me, creating depth and dimension is generally, very, very often, uh, a blend of multiple multiple reverbs. It's not one reverb, it's a blend of a couple. And I get more, just something that I could never get out of one reverb by using one or two, and sometimes three. Uh, I mean, it's just, I, I, I love that. That's, I mean, it's not a, a modern trick. Al Schmidt's been doing that for uh, decades, you know, so it's, it's nothing new. But um, anyway, that's what I like to do. So let's check it out. Everybody's got some blues. 
Now, did you notice this is darker sounding than the, in the room? Everybody's got some blues. But it's not overly dark, right? Okay, so again, kind of creating that, that, that depth image thing that we were talking about. I'm not going to use as much of that prior to the chorus as, um, in fact, maybe not at all. So, I, you know, let it transition and kind of build and go somewhere. Now, we have underneath that, we have something else going on here, right? Okay, obviously those should be further back on the stage, way behind the lead singer. So reverb is our, you know, our best good buddy in that situation. So I'm going to bring up uh, number three, row number three here. And you can see my first go-to in the chain is the Tai Chi. Uh, I haven't had this very long, but I'm absolutely in love with it. I, I'll just, uh, let me just profess. I had the Seventh Heaven from Liquid Sonics for quite a while. That's the Bercasti uh, presets and, and loved it. But that's all I had from them. Over the Christmas break, I downloaded everything and, and you know, just, just trying to grow and learn new things and not rely on the same old tools. And they have an amazing, an amazing bundle. So that I'm really excited about a lot of what they're doing. And this is one of their newer plugins. And it uh, check this out. It's reverb, but it's synth. I mean, it's it's capable of so many cool things. It's it's just got a uh, a really really cool vibe to it. And so that that's to me that patch is perfect. I'm not even going to try anything else. Let's just put that in there. And then what we'll do because uh, I am me and I'm a blender is I'm going to also throw some long delay in there. Ooh, ah. Yeah, perfect. And I, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my long delay and I'm going to even use just a little more feedback. Perfect. So between a combination of a couple things, I, I've got some top end, you know, I'm not really making this really bright, but at the same time, the, this patch is kind of on the darker side, it's not a bright patch. So it sounds further away from us by nature. Okay. Now, one more thing let's deal with real quick. And that's this big section here. Okay. So all of a sudden for that moment, Chase is, you know, was center stage and he was relatively dry with a little, just enough depth and dimension, but we want at this moment, I would want a lot more of something, a lot more star power, right? So I'm going to use my longer delay. Whoa. Perfect. I'm going to use, let's try this. Whoa. Okay, that, that tail is really pretty. But I'm even going to use some of my extra long mo vocal moments send. Whoa. That's way too much, but I just wanted you to hear it. Whoa. And that is the Valhalla Shimmer. And I have a couple tools ready to go to create. I've got a patch inside of Tai Chi from Liquid Sonics. I have a, a black hole from Eventide uh, that's just ready to go in case I want something different than what I'm hearing. So let's check that, in, check that out in the mix. Now that, that's a cool handoff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the vocal two down right there and ch check that handoff one more time because I want it to go back to a drier, more close vocal sound. Yeah, yeah. But I don't need a single answer. yeah, very cool. And the other thing I would do is I would take that uh, that delay down right there. Check that out. But I don't need a single answer. Yeah, that'd be a great trick. You know, scene change. It's all about scene changes uh, on songs like this and, and nailing each one of them. So another thing that we need to have in our template is long delay throws. If you're working on anything pop, anything current, anything modern, you just have to have them there because they're expected. You know, I know some of us make our living in 
Broadway and bluegrass and various things, and it's just not a thing. But most of us should have a handful of options ready to go. So I've got this little knob here called Vocal Throw. And what I'm going to do is I've already got it. I didn't have it on, but I, I've already got a couple words. Uh, and, and this just is one of those modern things that the uh, listeners expect now, little ear candy moments. So let me show you. Everybody's got some blue. Got some blue. And everybody's got a true. Okay, I've got it a little loud, but that, that intentionally because I really wanted you to hear it. Um, so that's the Echo Boy on a half note, and it's the telephone setting. The telephone setting works so good for this kind of a thing. And I can come in with my SSL if I want to and really make it snotty, right? Like, let's just go to 1K and with a tight Q. Everybody's got some blue. Got some blue. Check it out. Everybody's That's why I have the SSL there just ready to go. And one other thing, I have this on a on a on a mono send because a lot of times I want it right up the middle. But if I'm looking for some stereo spread, I have this guy here ready to go. Everybody's got some blue. And everybody's got a true. Again, that this this is just the way I envision front to back. And side to side, you know, with frequency, frequency response of our vocals, our delays, and our reverbs, as also uh, timing. Now, what I want to do is I want to close this because this is a kind of an upbeat, modern thing that needs to be pretty dry except for a few moments. I'm going to bring up a song uh, that is just the opposite, something that needs to be fairly ambient, okay? And we'll take a look at how we approach that. This is my friend Mackenzie Johnson. Uh, this is a song I mixed called Sisterhood, and it's a whole different vibe. It's pop, and it's sparse at times, but you'll hear the, you know, like the acoustic guitar. It's supposed to be very haunting, very mysterious. The effects we use on the vocals would go a long way to creating that mood. Let me play you a little bit of it with the vocals bone dry. Light a candle in the darkness Dance around under the harvest moon Did you know that you can make things happen? And then it gets to the chorus. The craft, the black is cast, the shadows cast, the flight of So this one, it, we need to be heavier handed than the other one. So again, I, I, it's the same, the same philosophy of front to back with dark, bright uh, delays, you know, being sent to reverbs. All of that stuff is in play. But this will let you hear some of the longer reverbs, I think. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go up to the lead vocal. And we're gonna we're gonna instantly do our same little trick of the spreader. Here we go. Light a candle in the darkness. Dance around under the harvest moon. Okay, that should be perfect. Now let's use the short delay on the on the verses. Light a candle in the darkness. Dance around under the harvest moon. Did you know that you can just enough to make it sound like she's not. You know what I want to do? Instead of the short, let's try the slap delay. Let's try that. There it is. Light a candle in the darkness. Because that's even darker and more mono. So let's go up to that. Let's try my seven and a half ips. Light a candle in the darkness. Dance around under the harvest moon. Did you know that you can make things happen? With just a little bit of magic, let them think that you are unhinged. Let's stick with 15. Light a candle in the darkness, dance around under the harvest moon. Did you know that you can make... Okay, what we're going to do here on the reverb, we're going to, on our shorter, more early reflection, short room kind of thing, I'm, I am, I believe, going to start with the 480 A plate. Let's try that. Light a candle in the darkness Dance around under the harvest moon Did you know that you can make things happen With just a little bit of magic Okay, so she she sounds like a star, but it's not real obvious yet. We're saving ourselves room for the scene change to get a bigger tail going later. Light a candle in the darkness In fact, I think I'm going to uh, increase the decay time just a little. Light a candle in the darkness Dance around under the harvest moon Did you know that you can make things... Okay, 
Okay, on this track, let's take the long delay and let's go ahead and turn it on, but but barely audible. Let's get just a little bit of that 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 triangle going. Light a candle in the darkness. Dance around under the harvest moon. Okay, now this happens from time to time. Depending on the tempo, whether they're counting, how they're counting it, sometimes you have to go to your vo your delays and change your sixteenths to uh, eighths and your quarters, your eighths rather, to quarters. Okay, so let's try that. Light a candle in the darkness. That, that. Light a candle in the darkness. Dance around under the harvest moon Did you know that you can make things happen With just a little bit of magic Okay, so now we, we kind of, we got to hear how big that reverb is. Uh, so let's go up to the, the lead vocals in this chorus and let's do something that's, um, you know, cool and grand. Ready? The craft, the black is... Let's go ahead and just do this. Let's use that same close plate but now let's start working on something longer the craft the black is cat the shadows cast the flight upon a broom it isn't white or black there's more than that i'll fight I, I like that i like that okay so now let's try instead of that let's try even the longer vocal three the craft the black is cat the shadows cast the flight upon I like that. Now that that's that Tai Chi. The craft, the black. I don't think that's the patch I want for this. Let's try. Let's try cinematic rooms here. Let's try that. The craft, the black is cat, the shell. Ah, that's not the one I want either. See, but but I have them ready because some songs I found that to be an incredible patch. Let's try this seventh heaven up here, this Bracasti, uh, this ice house patch. The craft, the black is cat, the shadows cast, the flight upon a broom. It is. Yeah, I think we combine that with our long delay, and we're going to be on to something. The craft, the black is cat, the shadows cast, the flight upon a broom. It is in white or black. Just for grins and giggles, because we're in a hurry, we're going to cut copy over that long delay to our two background, our harmony lines, uh, our long reverb, rather, and our long delay. And let's check that out. The craft, the black is cat, the shadows cast, the flight upon a broom. It is a white or black, there's more than that. A fight to tell the truth, it is a wickedness, don't fall for this. Here's a spot where it's really prominent. Right at the end of these lines, I, I boosted a lot of really long delays and a lot of reverbs, and check it out. Welcome to the sisterhood. I know and then we go back to the tighter, closer sound. So that's that's the thinking, is, 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 is to keep it moving. I mean, there's songs where it should, you know, kind of stay consistent from beginning to end, but you need to have all these options built into a template ready to go. You know, the worst thing you can be doing during a mix most of the time is bringing up 10 different reverb plugins and, and trying to find a sound. You know, I, I spend a lot of time certain weeks of the year developing new sounds and having them in a template ready to go. Some of them I've, kept, I've had in a template for years. Some of them I, I will wipe and throw it. I'll throw it away in six months and replace it just to keep fresh things going in my head. But I can always stay fresh and, and, and move fast that way. But it's always, it's always about this, the, you know, I've used the words over and over about how bright things are, or dark things are, how wide it is, how narrow it is. It's it's always going to be the same for me until it isn't, and I decide to break the rules to to, to fit some something I hear that I visually don't see uh, yet. Um, but but that's that's kind of the way I do it. Feel free to steal any of these patches you want and use them on your own music. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Happy mixing. Mm -hmm.